So hello, my name's Rob, this is Cattle Rabbit Scale Model Studios, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit gross and a little bit different. Now, those of you that have been keeping up with the channel know that a couple of weeks ago I teamed up with the extremely talented Toby from Zebra Munda to make these awesome little body bags. Well, we put our heads together and we decided to come up with blood bags as well. Blood bags, blood sacks, um, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they're gross, they're great, they add so much atmosphere and flavor to your scenery pieces. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I made mine. Do go and check out Toby's video after this because I'm sure it's going to be amazing. It's messy, but it is a lot of fun. So let's get started. Now, the first thing we're going to need is some poly bags or any type of clear plastic, really, um, bag type thing will, will work. Um, I've got a waste paper bin liner, I believe that is, or pedal bin liner. I've got some Yoohoo glue, and then I've got some Citadel paint. This is Blood for the Blood God and Contrast Blood Angels Red. Um, that's going to be our blood effect. I also have this, which is our secret weapon, which is a, uh, a curling iron, I believe, um, for, for curling hair. I don't know, I have perfectly naturally curls. I, I don't need it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our poly bag and a ruler or just something that we can draw a straight line with. And then using a pen, all I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a straight line uh, on this bag because what we want to do is try and get these as straight as possible. The straighter we make this now, the slightly easier it's going to be later on. Like I said, this, this can be fiddly, but I do believe the effect is worth it. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully cut this out but don't throw the top section away. We will need that for later. Then same again, I cut them in half. The reason why I like using the bottom sections is because you've actually got two edges already sealed uh, and we want these as watertight as possible. Obviously for the reasons of it's going to be, have sealed you know, liquids inside them. So pop on your curling iron or hair straighteners or um, I, mean, I suppose you could use the edge of an oven as well. Um, just do be very careful with these lying around. Uh, I'm a professional at burning myself, so you know, don't worry. And then next we're gonna make up some, some blood effect. Now, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to mix the two together and then I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Now see to how much you mix up really depends on how filled up you want your bags or you know how many you're making etc so i don't really have the measurements for this but i worked on about two brushfuls of each and then a brush full of water as well um just to you know sell the effect i don't think you really need to uh overfill them too much but you know if that's what you're going for then hey do it, it but there is going to be a a slightly difficult stage um, coming up so on the best interest of, of selling the effect I would probably say just maybe a little bit less than what you always think you need now once we're, we're happy with our blood mix and I don't know whether you've given blood before I give quite regularly when it's filled up in the bag it's like a really dark almost a browny red color or well, mine is I don't know whether that's normal um, but the reason why we kept the bottom of the top section of the poly bag is to test to see if our straighteners or our curling iron is hot enough to actually seal the bag. Now, the way I check to see if it's hot enough is because of one, it will obviously make a seal, but what you can do is you can blow into the bag and then just seal it up. And then if it's hard to push the air out, now don't forget there's a, a, a little Ziploc type thing on there. So the air will escape eventually, but if it's really hard to put it, you know you're, you're probably good to go. Um, the first step on this is to seal the shorter end. Um, I find it easier to seal this end first, um, only purely because I've got stumpy little fingers. Um, my mum always said I had Freddie Flintstone fingers, so... Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not the nimblest of people. Um, I was getting quite frustrated at one point actually, but it is very doable. Once you know you've got a good seal and you can pinch the end while it's uh, 
it's drying. Um, plus, it won't burn your fingers or anything like that. But the, obviously, the curling iron or straighteners probably would. So once again, if you are I don't know, under the age of 16, it's quite a responsible thing to say. Please maybe ask an adult to help you with this section or um, just be supervised is, is probably a good idea. Now, this is the fiddly bit. We've got all of our edges sealed bar one. What we have to do is keep this section open while we transfer our blood mix um, into the bag itself. Now, the way I did this in the end was I jabbed my index finger into it and then using a paintbrush, I just bit by bit just transferred the, the paint to the, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there was an easier way of doing this. If you think of it or you try this, do let me know in the comments below. You probably could use a pipette or a little syringe maybe. I didn't have one at hand that was fairly decent, um, so I didn't want to use it. And then just off camera, I dropped it. Don't worry, um, once the, also the blood was in, I did notice there was a small leak. I sealed up that edge, uh, which is what I'm doing here. And once again, I found the best method is to push it against the curling iron or the heat and then just just tap it with your finger now because I've got paint right up to the edge it did fizzle and crack and it dried and warped a little bit because obviously it's trying to cool it as it's it's heating it up this is why I would try and avoid um, getting paint towards the edge like I did um, however this was my last poly bag and I really couldn't afford to <laughs> Um, mess this up so it, it still works don't get me wrong um, and it's sealed up quite nicely here I'm just checking the edges to make sure no paints escaped I know I've got red all over my fingers um, but I've got a fairly good seal there and um, yeah that's the that's the blood bag as you can see it, I mean I think it sells the effect quite nicely you could leave these lying around sections of the underhive they don't have to be as big as this either but I thought that was quite cool but I wanted to do something a little bit different. Now, getting back to this liner here, it's great because it's slightly transparent and see-through and it reminded me of when you go to your local butchers or you buy meat at a supermarket at a meat counter, they, they've always put it in that weird white bag and you can kind of see that something wet is inside there and this is great for that. So all I do is I cut a two inch square and then getting some Yoohoo glue in the same pot that I put all the the blood mixture in I squeeze out a really good amount of yoohoo um, and then what I do is I mix it together I think um, I add some more blood for the blood god here I wasn't so happy with how dark the mixture is as I really wanted it to look you know that dark red kind of style so I just added a bit more and I actually, funny enough, found a really dodgy pipette that I managed to just get to work um, with squeezing some out. I think it got clogged with PVA on a previous build. But once you give it a mix together, now when you mix Yoohoo glue with varnish, it goes like really stringy and gory and almost looks like innards and things. So you can actually get a really good effect by doing like I don't know, organs, tendrils, just, it's really gross. Um, I think Yuhu Guru is great on its own because you can do dribble effects and stuff like that. But I say, it must be something in the Blood for the Blood God I found that actually makes it look like well, organs. It's, it's, it's disgusting, but it's great at the same time. Then all I do is I pinch all of the sections together. Just like this once again fat fingers I had a little bit of trouble with this section um, what you want to do is try and kind of make what I want to go for here is like a bin bag effect so just as long as it's all pinched together at the top and then what I actually do is I fold everything in and then I twist it um, so I can actually get a little tiny little like bag effect don't worry um, because you can actually play around with this stuff and it's very pliable um, what I wanted was the effect to make it look like something was in there that was wet. And I think this does, once again, sell the effect. Scattered about the underhive, these are going to look great. I tied up uh, the bag with a little tiny bit of thread. This is the same type of thread I had left over from the body bag build. I nipped off the edges just to make it look like it was tied up. 
and that's it. Um, I say that's it. it. It's a lot easier than probably than what I've explained it, but it's really easy to do. And you can kind of squidge it around and play around with it. Um, and it just looks gross. Like there's probably someone's, I don't know, internal organs in there, which is great scattered about the underhive. However, now I've got our two types of things here. Me and the Mamondo also got talking. And what we decided to do as a little bit of a bonus was make a little bit of scatter terrain um, each. And this is what I've come up with. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Corpse Grinder. Now, I've wanted to do something like this for such a long time. I love stuff like this. And I think now was a really, really good time to make one. Obviously, um, this is made out of quite a few various pieces. Um, and I'm, ju I'm just so in love with this. I think it's gonna be a great little thing to have on the, the board, just scenic, even if it's used, if it's uh, something to fight over or defend. I just, you know, I was so stoked to be doing this. And I knew I had to do something really cool because I know Zebra Munda's probably gonna just do something absolutely amazing. Um, but it was basically made out of a little bit of zone mortalis tile, which I've recently painted up. Those of you who've been following the channel once again will see that. I will link it um, in the box here so you can actually go and watch that video as well. Uh, this is part of a fan, I believe, on a computer. And this is the from the Gene Steeler Colts Goliath, I think the Rock Grinder kit, all glued together. I packed it out with some bases and things. And then I've just got some bulkheads uh, that I picked off on eBay that have been sitting around my studio for a little while and I thought, do you know what, let's put them to good use. So, obviously assembly wise it was all just a, a bit of a super glue job. I did just dry fit everything to make sure it, it worked. I did originally glue it the wrong way round and I had to tear that off, but hey, it adds to the effect. Um, here I've got the bodies from, I believe it's a corpse cart uh, from Age of Sigmar, which I've just I've washed with some a flesh colour and I come in and touch in the hair and some clothes and stuff and there were some rats and then everything else is just bespoke little bits that I had lying around. Uh, there were some bits that were printed for me from a friend. Uh, I will try and leave links in the description below to where I got bits or what I used to, um, to actually make this if, if people are interested. Um, but I did, I had so much fun. The reason why the holes there is so I can pop a little LED through. You'll see that a little bit later, but that's it. Um, once again, this was great fun and I can't wait to see what Zebra Mundo has come up with. I will leave a link to his video in the pinned comments and description below. Once again, thanks for having me Zebra Mundo. It's been fantastic bouncing ideas around off of you. Um, I've enjoyed every minute. Cue the money shots. God bless and take care.